All right, so uh, let's get started quickly. Um, again, for the reporters, day four uh, of week nine and um, standard time. So let's start by sharing how was yesterday and uh, did you face any challenge or any blockade that you would like us to talk about now? Anything, so we can go ahead and raise hands. We are here with Emtina and, you know, she will be helping us along the way. All right, let's go ahead. Who wants to go first? You can raise your hands. Thanks, can your mic is open? Do you want to go first? Hello? All right, Michael, go ahead. Okay, uh, good morning to everyone. Yesterday, uh, we, we were having a group meeting, then we discussed about the project and we delegated and uh, separate our tasks and to do for today. And uh, I managed to submit the, the task as well. No, blo no blocker as of now. Thank you. Okay, that's great. I'm just going to keep it up with your team. Uh, Ahmed, you can go next. Hello, good morning. Uh, yesterday we made our initial approach. So uh, it's, it's uh, theoretically look good, but uh, we will test it uh, this week. We'll try to, to build it. So I think uh, that's all for now. Uh, we don't have any blockers until now. All right, that's amazing. That's amazing. Keep it up with your team, Ahmed. Hilary, you can go. Good morning, everyone. Um, yesterday, I, uh, we, we met as a group to discuss on the approach, and we came up with some with an approach to start with. And... Uh, but later, um, some modifications came in, but I submitted um, the document with some modifications, but we hope to discuss more on that today and uh, come up with a clear approach and divide the task accordingly. And um, no blocker so far, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to use Postgres uh, story data uh, before we uh, we get access to the AWS. Thank you. All right, and Tino. Sorry, I. Sorry. So, what was the question exactly? Can you repeat. Sorry. Um. No question. Us just mentioning. I was just saying that. Um. I'm starting. I'm starting with using Postgres locally. So um, I'm assuming that the AWS RDS is, is Postgres based. So uh, that's what I'm trying to like, implement before we get the instances. OK, yeah, that's good. Um, that's a good approach. Um, yeah, yeah so no, there are no questions exactly, but yeah, it's a good approach, yes. Okay, that's great. Uh, keep it up with the team as well. Let, let's hear from Daisy. Good morning, everyone. So yesterday we managed to submit the interim report. And for our group, we met yesterday and we agreed on our approach that we're going to use to implement the project. And we also picked tasks. So yeah, we'll be proceeding with our tasks and we also have another meeting to do. Okay, that's super. Keep it up with the team as well, Daisy. Uh, let's hear from the rest of the teams and the rest of the people. How is it going within your respective groups? Okay. 
Evet, mahbubu. Good morning everyone. I am uh, with us uh, in the same group with Hillary. We are working, we are meeting and uh, yesterday we uh, we decided on the approach that we are going to do. And today we will have task division. I don't have any blocker, but we, do we have to do the uh, an EDA on the data? Sorry, I apologize. I haven't. I didn't. I didn't hear the question. Can you repeat? I'm very sorry. Do you have to do an EDA on the data? Ah, do you have to do EDA on the data? Okay. Um. Well. Uh. It's not exactly one of the tasks, but if you like, if you want to get familiar and experiment basically with your data, this is part actually for, of the task one. Um, part of the, what you can do, you can do some ABA, of course, just to, for you to get familiar with the data and understand how it works. But like, you are not required to really get um, understanding for a particular because your, the data you're going to be using is data on stocks or like um, cryptocurrencies. So you are not really, you don't need to have results on like the trends or or like uh, what is, um, how the prices are going uh, over time or, what, or whatever. It's not to that that we need. What we need is that you understand what the data is and how you can basically perform back, back testing, what are these indicators, how, like what kind of strategies you can have and all of that. So, um, yeah, so that like, that kind of ADA just to understand like what the data is, okay? Um, I think I like, uh, okay, great. Um, uh, I think we can move on to the next person. Yeah, sure. Who wants to go next? Yes, Betty. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, for yesterday, I have managed to submit uh, the interim report. As for the group dynamics, we are meeting with our group and we are discussing on how we are going to be implementing the work and how we are going to be dividing the tasks. Uh, for a question, I, I would like to ask on the front-end part. It says, uh, build a front-end application whereby logged-in users can specify uh, scene parameters and get back test results. So, what are the scene parameters that are required here? Can, Tina, can you take it? Um, okay, so um, I apologize again. I can you repeat the question? Uh, really. Can you repeat the question again? Okay. okay, I'll repeat the question. It says uh, to build a front pin front end part where the user can get uh, some parameters, the scene parameters. What are the scene parameters required? That was my question. Uh, yeah, so um, when you like scenes are the parameters for a back testing, and so it's, it's what they are called. And so basically, your user will be asking you uh, to perform a back testing, a particular like uh, uh, whatever parameters you need for that back testing is you are going to be getting from the user. So they they have to specify what kind of back testing they want to perform. And so these parameters are called a scene, and you get them like maybe in a JSON format and send them back to your to, to the back end to perform it. So um, 
if the does this answer your question? Yes. Okay. Uh, right. Assalamu If you're speaking, we can't hear you. Can you try speaking again? Okay. I think she has internet issues, but in the meantime, we'll kind of go ahead. Uh, let's see Jones again. How about now? Okay, yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, so yesterday uh, I was able to submit the interim report after discussing some aspects of it with my team. And also we discussed on um, how to distribute the tasks and what tasks that we need to finish first and also the approach that we're going to take in tackling this project. And also, we plan to meet today again. Okay, that's amazing. Keep it up with your team. Any block yet? Not, not any yet. Perfect. All right, how about others? Okay, let's check up with the people. Few people. Uh, uh, starting with Yamasi, Yamasi, good morning. Sure, Derridge. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, yesterday, yeah, I submit uh, interim reports as well as we, we meet with our group and discuss our approach. And uh, yeah, then, and also uh, we create some uh, structure folder for our starters. Uh, yeah, so also no blockers yet. Oh, all right, that's super. Keep it up there with the team as well. How about Adisu? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, yesterday, uh, I managed to submit my interim report, and uh, with my uh, teams, uh, we had a meeting yesterday and uh, we divided some tasks. Uh, and today, we will update on that one. Uh, we'll have a, a meeting after the session. Uh, till now, there is no blocker. Thank you. Okay, I'm missing the issue. Who else do we have on a queue? No one. Anyone who wants to go anyway? How about you, Grace? How about you, Grace? And, um, Jerusalem. Hello, everyone. Okay. Yeah, we had a meeting yesterday with our group members. We divided the task and I was able to submit my interim report. No block as yet. Okay, that's super amazing then. Um, 
Okay, we still keep it up as well. Uh, yeah, so happy to hear that we do not have uh, many blockers or challenges today. Then, um, Ratnet or Emtina, do you have anything you want to say, or can we call it a meeting and focus on today's schedule? Okay, I have something to say. So, the presentation of last week only four members present. So, if you guys, uh, since it's too a bit late now, but if you guys want to present, we will put it on a board. So, could you just raise your hand, those of you who want to present last week project, so we can set up time and you can share us what you did. So, can I get a raised hand or something on the chat that you guys are ready to present? Okay, who doesn't don't want to present that? You can raise them for the opposite one. You have to vote for something. Either you want to present or not. So okay, think a worker. Uh, what is that for though? A worker. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll try my best to try it. I'm, I'm actually uh, wasn't ready, but yeah. So you can be ready for presentation. Uh, yeah, I, I, I will, uh, I will give what I have. After. Yeah, that was that all we ask. Thank you. Uh, others, could you please? Maybe we can use like um reactions um who who is uh, wants and ready to present maybe you can give a thumbs up and uh, and who doesn't want to present like uh, can give the thumbs down basically and let's see like what kind of reactions we have okay there are about uh, 20 plus purple people so we need to see more than two So there will, no, will not be no penalty, uh, penalties for not presenting this time. So, um, right, Rahmat? Yeah, yes, right. Yes. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> okay. So. Um, okay. So should we just continue right now, Imtina? Maybe we can let Hilaria Walker. Yeah, if they if there is so only two or three people, it should be fine to present even just now. And uh, yeah, we'll take the others as a no, maybe. Yes, yes, right. So there are like yeah, uh, there are four people who presented: Johannes, Michael, Japez, and Adeso last time. So this time, Hilary Abu Bakr, are you like one of you is ready right now to present? Okay, Abu Bakr is ready, so we can go ahead. I think. Okay. Uh, since my slide is not done, I will be presenting from my blog. Okay. <laughs> you can see something, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, as a refresh now, uh, our last, uh, our last week. Uh, project was like logistic optimization for delivery drivers location. So uh, using casual. So we are asking, what if some variable changes? How much would affect, would it affect the others? In in our case, it would be uh, for Gokada, the delivery platform in Nigeria. So the what if scenarios are for uh, testing different kinds of. Uh, this is, uh, features that would affect the other in by how much so the uh, yeah in causal inference we actually use graphs to to uh, depict uh, relationships between two variables and more so on our causal inference we 
actually we're asking what if drivers move one kilometer every 30 minutes in the selected direction so what would happen to the acceptance of the uh, drivers uh, for for those trips so on our on our inference so uh, we have defined the variables we construct the like this is our methodology so construct the causal graph and compute the factors so the first thing we did was to analyze the data feature engineer uh, then casual inference then opti optimize also uh, in the middle or at last we actually try to visualize and recommend on that so yeah that was also testing so for data visualization we clean the data for uh, uh, un unhandled uh, rows or missing values yeah so for visualization we try to visualize and remove any outliers that are found from the trip time in different uh, features so on our feature engineering part so we added some types of feature engineering part. so feature engineering is needed uh, to infer different aspects of or different things that would affect the outcome of the uh, the the things we are to measure so yeah so one of them was trip duration how much time did it take so we from we subtract from the start time and in time from in time the start time so uh, cal we calculate the trip duration we handle the missings uh, are days of the week because sometimes uh, weekends and weekdays are a bit different in workloads so that th we thought that might be of effect but uh, not that much as we will see later on so also hour of the hour of the day might have some things so yeah uh, so uh, calculating yeah trip distance from longitude latitude yeah we used the uh, Hover sign formula to calculate the distance between uh, the longitude, longitude latitude between the origin and destinations. Yeah, weather data also. We actually uh, did a weather data for different uh, times. So, as you can see, we have like different kinds of rain instead of just trying to say uh, is raining we say heavy rain snowy because like from what from what we have got there was like 10 10 types of uh, precipitation in nigeria between the between the given data time so we used all the data so like the problem was uh, it increases the overhead of uh, the computation so we were we were forced to reduce the data be between is rain on and is heavy rain so to get a really good understanding on the causal graph so we constructed co causal graphs so this was the initial uh, graph we constructed which didn't include the drivers but we added from we added some uh, uh, some graphs by uh, domain knowledge yeah so this this was the initial one so yeah uh, so it is from from this it says like driver action is influenced by durations we also calculated average speed so like how much is the speed but we found out that it doesn't have much influence on the outcome in the graph yeah uh, we also had some common sense explanation for that so weather conditions like rain uh, heavy rain might influence driving conditions so like we added those conditions special days for or also like we added them manually then we ended up like this graph so we used Bayesian network to check for the probabilistic graphical model that represent yeah dependencies so between variables so uh, yeah since causal network uh, uh, supports discrete probability we have to actually discretize those uh, things we also had uh, to uh, use uh, the trip map uh, trips into different categories 
for easier uh, like what do we call for the, for easier dividing so what 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 was the problem was we had what we call uh, uh, sorry i forgot the name so the the problem was the long and short medium and trips we don't know uh, how much is long short or medium so we used the the 25 percentile 75 percentile as a measure so we started doing that so based on those classification we the, the the precision we calculated the precision but it was small enough data so around 25 percent of the data so the precision was 75 percent so it's a bit average but some of the precisions we try to uh, some of the questions we asked were not correct so yeah we did a lot of testing so uh, yeah the, this uh, trip origin yeah uh, is likely to be influential uh, and yeah two to five units notable shift where probability function increases yeah the distance also affects the change so yeah between there is also uh, a change in latitude and longitude and we can have like approximately 50 percent like likelihood of action so like half of being the thing so yeah the limitations on the work are uh, quality uh, quality of the data uh, yeah assumptions in domain knowledge are also could be also a factor in like feature engineering like the um, having more features would help having more data would help so external factors we didn't actually account for might have been influencing the, our decisions yeah uh, also like limited knowledge we available team had uh, small uh, domain knowledge yeah and also the other thing is like limited computational power we used to run out for out, out of computational power since we have like we had like 20 rows so we were forced to actually reduce the amount of work so yeah, future work had to uh, include data enrichment, advanced causal inference method, and like advanced uh, causal networks or using uh, more regressions. Uh, yeah, continuous data analysis, continuous data ingestions, uh, simulation scenarios. Like yeah, we we actually didn't do much on the visualization part. That we actually used folium uh, folium like uh, map data but it actually didn't turn out to good to be good so more on the visualization and simulation uh, probably could use real-time scenarios yeah so I think this is this is all about it oh I missed some presentations probably you could ask more questions thank you uh, thank you, Abubakar. That was a good presentation, actually. Um, so uh, you said, um, so I have a, a, a couple of questions. Um, one, maybe you have already mentioned, uh, is that you said, like, when you fit uh, your patient, uh, patient network to your, like, uh, to your graph, uh, like, you got, you got this average uh, precision, or 75%. Uh, so what is your what was your like explanation of this or have you tried to like uh, see where the problem was or ha Sorry, have you tried something different Sorry do you hear me now uh, Yeah yeah So you said I said like when you tested your your model after fitting uh, the Bayesian network uh, so um you got like this average um metric average like a 70 percent 75 percent precision or something um i think you mentioned so what was like what is your explanation or what what do you think have you tried to like fix or try something different to get a better uh result or like or do you have like some kind of explanation for that like could be a guess but 
uh, yeah, but uh, I initially the first time I I run this uh, precision test was the precision was around 60, 50 to 60. So yeah. it's around 0 0.5 to 0 0.6. So I actually removed some of the columns because the running time was a bit uh, larger and most of the columns I added, uh, for example, the, what what was, yeah, the precipitation part. So uh, most of the, most of it doesn't have that much influence on the uh, causal graph as well as the prediction. So we removed that. So I think the model had a better time uh, like predicting it. So it jumps to 70 to 75 percent. Okay, so you're predicting the action, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, that my other question is that have you tried to do an intervention? Did you use do calculus um, in your in, uh, no, your like, actually, I actually tried to do that, but not uh, while 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 I'm writing the blog. So the also I didn't have that much time to actually. Uh, rerun everything so i'm actually trying to do it uh, within this this week okay so like uh, okay if you have time of course you can do that later on yeah. um yeah so but yeah good uh, like um uh, overall this was a good presentation good understanding even if it's like uh, the work is not completely done but you can of course um improve it later on okay so um uh, do you have any questions Ahmed? No, no. Thank you. I'll work out for presenting what you have. Thank you. We can move on to Hilary. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, so, uh, so the business objective was to help uh, Gokada uh, understand why they are on field request and probably and give them the recommendations on how to improve. So, on the pre-processing, I I renamed the columns order ID from the from the first one, the completed orders, and so that we could be able to mask them. And the, the rest uh, strip start time and date time to date format. I impeded missing values from trip start time using media and uh, drop some columns that were didn't have venue or that had null values and also lowercase the columns. So for feature extraction, I extracted time features and uh, this from the completed orders, it has it had the time. I used RS, this is open uh open road service uh which give uh, given the latitude and longitude of the given the latitude and longitude of the um trip origin and destination i reversed them and then this for rs and then added holiday feature so i have uh, given now the reverse coordinates i noticed that the coordinates were starting with lat long so i changed to long to latitude and used RS to get the distance. So I did not use um, I have a scene formula because it was kind of like giving me straight line on the surface of the ad. So I went with the um, with the API RS and I installed it locally. Um, I added weekend uh, and then the holiday for Nigeria using holidays API. So I combined the data frames before uh, training the casual graphs and the model. So I used Gina join. Uh, this I wanted to keep the rows uh, on, on both data frames. I, I wanted to only keep the rows where the ID exists. So this means that if there were no drive action, I will drop that column because that's what we are trying to predict. So, uh, and um, I filtered the data frame for trips where the uh, drive action or in there so the uh, moving on to the eda 
uh, analysis so I identified outliers there are several outliers in trip distance this is the distance I used to arrest so uh, this was the estimation the distance was estimation using a bike route uh, instead of a car and even a motorcycle uh, I bicycle I mean so from this one I found like 64,000 and then trip duration also had several outliers uh, around 3,000 so I removed uh, dealing with outliers I didn't remove I just cut them so this is replacing these large values with the nearest acceptable threshold so uh, uh, again so the driver distance I didn't use this driver distance column to to come up with a causal graph because because um, doing the analysis uh, getting the standard deviation I realized that it didn't have much effect so the driver distance is the distance from the uh, trip from the trip origin I'm assuming is where the trip will start from or where the user is or parcel and uh, the distance where the the user the, the driver is so the driver is receiving the request so th that distance didn't have much effect because it, it seemed like they were nearly the same distance for for all of them so they were like close to where they not close like they were nearly the same distance for the driver so i i dropped it and then for visualization i used so using rs rs gave me the route so using that route uh, oh i mean rs now will return a geojson which is which contains the route details of that of that um, route from the trip origin to destination and then i could use folium um so i could i could display something like so uh, a sample is like you give the start coordination start this is the trip origin and the end and then it will return you a route which is the geojson and then folium will display that uh so moving on to casual in causal inference so um the so this is the fully connected graph i trained on the data and by the way before that i i had to I mentioned I had, I had to drop some columns that were not necessary for the for the causal graph and things like trip origin trip start time trip destination so I, I'm just using the features I extracted that are plausible for the yeah. prediction and then this is now the modified one uh, but there are several issues with the graph sometimes you could get a drive action uh, pointing to uh pointing to how of day so it was uh sort of incorrect uh you and that will not make sense so i i had to modify the graph you uh, adding the ages adding the ages and then i fitted the bayesian network so here i i fitted the bayesian network with the data that i had and then i i came up with uh I, this is the results for the page and network that was fitted so there's a probabilities that there was more re, more likely rejection so looking at this weekday uh okay this one i didn't i i didn't see it making sense so much but like let's say on a weekend morning it is uh yeah I was trying to understand the data, but uh, it got me confused. I uh, including uh, I got the classification report for Bayesian network. Uh, you can see also driver accepted uh, was precision zero. And by the way, this was the graph for 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 the graph. I I didn't use for this for this other graph that I had here. I had also issues training it, so it actually. Uh, it actually modified most of the uh, like most of it so I, I didn't end up with much accurate data because I end up dropping a lot of or capping uh, capping a lot of outliers so the, when I use same values for the outliers 
I ended up having having more like the same values which didn't give much prediction. So this one was earlier before I removed the outliers. And then uh, I trained, uh, I tried to train on the, the machine learning models. Again, I can show here. Uh, I tried with random boost, but initially before when I was using the uh, the outliers on, uh, with outliers, I, I had these values. They were more like the same for for X for random forest, for XG boost, graded boost as well, and logistic regression. But I was hoping to modify it and use the the data that I had that I had because I added the trip distance later on using RS. It uh, so. That was the case for me, and then uh, the challenges were the computation limits for processing the routes. It took actually a lot of time to use RS to get the actual like the routes, and then uh, using the APIs like uh, uh, Open Weather, uh, it had a fatal limit, but uh, there were limits for that. So I tried the to get the rain. I tried the meteor start, which Baka recommended, but I was also it was also taking a lot of time for me, so I, I ignored it for the moment. And then there were a lot of missing information uh, on the data. So perhaps that one, if we could have more information, uh, we could have like the traffic patterns, we could have uh, come up with better recommendations. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Valerie. Um, again, good presentation. Uh, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have like uh, like you addressed the, like what, like most of the like drawbacks and the problems and what do you think you can do? Um, okay, what do you have a question? Oh yes, uh, you can continue and then. Um... No, you can. If you have a question, you can go ahead. Okay. okay so, uh, I, I just want to ask Hilary, how, how, like, did you train on twenty six thousand rows? Um, I missed you on that. Yes, I used fifty six thousand. That was after. Oh no! Uh, for the first one, I used, I used like one point five million rows, but on the second one. Uh, after doing the trip distance, adding all that, I I had only fifty six thousand rows. So, because um, wh when I had to drop the driver distance and some, and 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 merge merge the data like using the outlier when I modify the outliers, I ended up having a lot of similar columns. So. They are duplicates. I when dropping duplicates, I end up with six other. Okay, so, uh, so what 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 were the duplicated ones, like the columns? Is that on holiday or different features or the already the original ones? Yeah, so it was more like not really the original one. So let's say uh, if I can, I just wanted to show for a second here. Uh, well, when you look at the merged, the one that I merged, I ended up having let's say for the order ID, you, you had like uh, several ones, but the first one was more like the accepted. So when I, the driver ID wasn't necessary. So having the hour of day, I I turned down the hour of day to, to categorical. So saying that uh, morning, afternoon, evening. So, and then the holiday were the same is weekend and trip. So the trip distance now and trip duration came came to be the same because I used I used the, there were many outliers. So using the same values for outliers, 
made these columns like these other ones rejected to be the same so i ended up dropping all of this uh if you can see after i dropped them i had i had now only accepted and rejected accepted and rejected and it reduced the column so to like only completed orders so, so sorry like uh I, I want to understand something so like dropping dropping those uh unaccepted or rejected uh, rows is that is that like is that a good a good way like because we are trying to understand why they are rejected so no, no what i mean is that for one row the same id trip duration trip distance it will be it will be a duplicate so i tried that one and it was a lot of rows i ended up having the same causal graph it didn't work so i uh i sort of okay. the recommendation was to do is to remove the duplicates it was duplicates not just the uh, they rejected all of them but the duplicates okay i oh i'm sorry to interrupt you in the middle here uh Hilary, when you say the 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 causal graph didn't work what do, what, do, what do you mean okay so having the duplicates uh no after dropping the most of them so when i try to train the causal graph with the with the new data the the one that i had uh removed the outliers or dealt with the outliers so the graph was not connecting it was isolating for each it wasn't forming any uh pattern and it, it had does it like uh do you set the threshold or some value because like yes so i set the threshold first to 0 0.3 and without setting the threshold i got an error that i have to do more iteration so i even went up to a million iterations but it because that i had like so less uh call uh, rows that the graph didn't couldn't make a uh okay so a, you so, didn't so have so enough data basically yes yes okay so i i just stick with the the graphs that i have i stick with the earlier data that i had for 1.5 million rows but outliers were not removed were not dealt with okay so uh, and there is was something that you mentioned during your presentation about the data when about the distance in particular you said there is a standard deviation was zero which meant that uh, the distances were the same can you like uh, go back to that to that point a little bit so there is something i don't understand this is like um i saw other people other trainees also like agreeing basically with this point did you notice that the distance was the same for all the drivers yeah so the distance between the the or trip origin uh mm -hmm. trip origin is we are assuming that it's where you went to meet meet the client but the driver location when was receiving the request so we can also let's say so that even the one who rejected we are co we are using the same distance to find this distance where he was when he was receiving the request and where he would have went to so when so, looking at looking at those distance the standard deviation was zero so i so sorry so and, yes let me yes. stop you a little bit so you are calculating the distance between the driver location and the trip origin is that it yes yes and for each order because like it doesn't it doesn't make sense to comp to compare other orders together but like for each order you find that the distance between the driver location and the and the trip origin is the same y yes i group the orders i group the orders and then computed uh, the standard deviation for that specific order and then went to other and uh it sounded out like they were more like the same they didn't vary a lot so okay so so this is strange so like uh sorry sorry hillary let me just uh like uh pose this question to others um did you also notice this uh, thing that uh, Hillary is talking about? So I just want to to see. Okay. okay. So the Johannes, okay. sorry, one second, just yes, uh, Hillary, sorry, Johannes, oh, oh, you are saying some down. That did you like uh, have found found something different? Yes, <clears throat> maybe our calculation might be different, but uh, the distance from the driver location to 
the trip origin. Um, yes, uh, the, to the trip origin was different for each driver. Okay, so How yeah, did you Hillary, calculate it, maybe? yeah, so maybe there is some error somewhere. Uh, Hilary, you wanted to speak. Sorry, I interrupted you. Yes. So what I'm saying is they are not the they are not like it's they are not the same but if you say it was 30 kilometers and the other one was like 29 the other one was 28 if you calculate standard deviation for those you'll get uh, a, a, a um, small value i think i got as i got zero and on that note no, but i used small values. sorry yes yes sorry i'll get not much drop you drop you here no, if the difference, if there is any difference, you're not going to get a standard deviation equal to zero at all. Um, it it ha even if it's small, it still has to be there. As, as uh, unless you are really like approximating it, if you are approximating it, like uh, yeah, saying like I'm not about so, like I'm calculating up to a unit of one kilometer, and then the standard deviation is less than one kilometer. That's a different thing. Uh, well, it have to be, yeah, so the division will be in kilometers again. Uh, so, yeah, so being it exactly zero and be it as a small value, these are two different statements. So you really have to be specific here because if it's exactly zero, that means that there is a mistake in the, in the data or there's a mistake in how you calculated it. But if it's not zero, if it's small, that's a different, that's a different issue. Um, it's not, it doesn't like indicate a mistake or, or a problem in the data. That's what I meant. So, okay, so let's, um, I'm, I'm sorry, like this is a very good discussion. It's, it's very great, but we are short on time. So we have to, um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to cut it, cut it short. So like, I will give you a chance to say what you wanted to say, Hilary. And then we can basically, um, if there's someone else who wants to present, we, we can give you a chance. Um, otherwise, like we can end the session here. So Hilary, go ahead. Uh, what do you want to say? So Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I think I made a mistake by uh, dealing with our class, so having same values and then doing the standard deviation. Perhaps I would have, I would have done that also. OK. Okay, so yeah, um, yeah, it might be like it's your approach that that changes it. Um, okay, so um, yeah, sorry, like that. I uh, so is there is anyone who wants to present at this mo at this point? Okay, is there again. Let me share my screen. Okay. So, yeah. I'm actually not completed, but uh, yeah, I just presented what I have done. So yeah, as uh, as known, so the the goal is just optimizing the delivery uh, driver location. So the methodology is uh, so just to to know the the reason of uh, unfull delivery location and uh, then. Then after that, we are going to just investigate using casual graphs. So yeah, the first step, I just, uh, I'm looking to just data overview. So, and, uh, but on this, uh, just I drop some uh, column because it is null. And, and also just, I'm trying to merge data, uh, but while I'm merging, uh, I have uh, some challenges. Uh, let me share my screen. So I think this is so, yeah, after I'm merging some, uh, you know, 
some column or some order ID is just completely removed. Uh, uh, so for example, just I'm trying to uh, add some uh, holiday and while I, 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 hold, I add holiday, so it returns to just uh, false and the true. So it's uh, appear on both uh, on completed folders, but while I merge, it is just only return false. So as well as I just recognize just the ID that's completed uh, not in delivery is it is about fifty uh, around five hundred thousand. So this is just rejected uh, drivers, and uh, but I have no option, so I just rejected this. And after that, I am trying to enhance our data set uh, with uh, publicly available features, just like rain as well as no rain. So uh, I did for around 41,000 and uh, yeah, I, I, and then I used uh, these for for gradual graphs. I also just try to uh, calculate the distance using this uh, uh, take, and uh, usually just using the good distance because this is recommended. After that, I am trying to just uh, see the data analysis using clusters, and also trying to use some dash uh, data shader. Uh, and after that, I did casual inference task. So yeah, but while I did this one, just uh, I only use Purost because it's just, it is not run. It takes a lot of time. Uh, it's not completed. So, and uh, while I using a lot of uh, data, uh, my PC is just stuck. So just I'm using only 1000 rows. Uh, and then from these, uh, I use just uh, uh, so other features just like a weather uh, and also yeah I see associated with radius trip destination but the graph is a little bit just uh, complex but it is uh, mostly the I understand the weather is uh, has most effects with. Uh, Relates to why, uh, why the just uh, more why we we get more unfulfilled driver requests. So after that, I'm trying to just uh, account similarity. So I'm trying to uh, share this one and uh, yeah, I'm actually just uh, use a uh, fraction data. So after that, I'm trying to compare with uh, the first one, ground truth. And uh, so the similarities uh, just as we increase our data, so uh, we, we get some stable casual graphs. And that's what I understand. Uh, after that, um, just I'm trying to inferring and validating casual graphs. Uh, for example, just uh, for, for the first question, given the drivers are recommended to move one kilometer every 30 minutes selected direction, what, what happens to the number of unfulfilled requests? So I'm trying to using the operation intervention, I get this uh, value and uh, yeah, the summary is, uh, so the intervention of moving drivers, one kilometer every 30 minutes result with very high probability uh, that there will be an unfulfilled request still. So, and only we have 2.7% uh, that will be not unfulfilled request. So yeah, implication is just as understand, it is not enough uh, just moving one kilometers in every 30 minutes to, you know to to uh what call to be no unfulfilled request that is what i'm understanding and also i'm just uh train a model using the uh, xp boost and as well as random forest so yeah just the model is uh totally overfitting because uh 
my data is my data is uh, small and and also there is imbalance uh between them it is the same with it so uh how did you like um how did you know that it was overfitting did you okay yeah this is um, just uh this is the graph so the data is in balance as well as uh, yeah, this is what I get, and uh, from this, the model is overfit. So the recommendation is uh, so based on historical data and casual graphs. Uh, so there should be some. We need to just optimize some strategy uh, to to get uh, a low and fulfilled return with radius. And uh, yeah, so in general, just other public features, just like uh, holiday and uh, weathers has a lot of effect on getting unfulfilled request. That's all. Here now. Uh, yeah, so thank you for, for presenting, that's good. Um, so, uh, can you go back a bit? Maybe just I want to see. Have you gotten uh, like a sensible causal graph using like the data? Yes. So this is okay. So this seems uh, has too many connections. So like uh, like is this like the final thing that you got from the algorithm? Yeah, but yeah, I didn't remove some work. Some just. Uh... I used all things. So, so did, is, did you did you did you remove anything by hand? Like after taking this graph, did you try to remove like some of this connection by hand? Like saying like, I don't know, um, like some relationships don't really make so much sense that you so you removed it. Did you like did you try that or like um, you just proceeded with this? No, no, I just proceeded with this. Okay. Um, all right so so when you say like you had used uh, a little like a small portion of the data like uh, to to train was this like for getting the graph or for for fitting the um for fitting the causal networks for it was it yeah, fitting them. for just for getting the graph, for the graph. No, uh, yeah this is uh yes this is for getting the graph okay uh, okay, so um, and so my final question is like um, so you're saying like um, the issue with using little data is only because of the computational uh, cost that is taking too much time. Is that yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, thank you. So if uh, someone else have a question, you can go ahead. Also, let me ask also if there is someone else who wants to present as well. Uh, this is your chance to, to try. So any questions for the Okay. So so uh, no let's say no there are no questions so thank you Drede, for presenting and um that was good so like uh i think we got like um so you see like from presentations like it seems like this problem with uh, using code nix and the computational uh cost was like the ma a major issue for for people and um so like uh, yeah okay so what else? Um, basically nothing. So I I want to note uh, this is like was a change in the schedule. So this is something uh, like minor. It's like uh, the tutorial that was set up for today was changed to tomorrow. So like uh, the like the schedule was changed uh, earlier, but like maybe you didn't notice. So we're not having any tutorials today. Um, so I think uh, basically there are no other. There are no, if there are no other questions or comments or anything that you want to, to say, we can end this session here. Um, let's see, Rahmat, do you have anything? 
No, no, I don't have. So let me just end the, the recording.